right, so today we are going to move through chapter 20, which is a very short chapter. This is a chapter on the lymphatic system. Um, the lymphatic system, your textbook kind of divides it up into two chapters, chapters 20 and 21. Um, your lymphatic system sort of does two different things. Uh, one function of the lymphatic system is that it picks up extra fluid that's in your tissues and puts it back in your bloodstream. Okay, so we talked about, um, I'll draw it on the whiteboard here. We talked about um, tissue perfusion at the end of chapter 19, where this is how we are getting stuff out of our capillaries, and then we're pulling waste back into our capillaries. You all remember tissue perfusion, that filtration pressure. In reality, we actually put more stuff out into our tissues than we take back in. So what that means is that our tissues are constantly getting a little bit of extra fluid all the time. And so one thing that your lymphatic vessels do is they typically run right next to capillaries, right next to veins and vessels, and they'll actually pick up this extra fluid and put it back in your bloodstream. Okay. So that's one big functional lymphatic system, and that's really what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about it from that function. We'll talk about some of the different cells that we find in our lymphatic system. We'll talk about tissues, we'll talk about lymph nodes, and we'll talk about lymph organs today. Um, the other part of your lymphatic system is that it functions in immunity. So remember we talked about how lymphocytes, white blood cells, are housed in your lymphatic system, in your lymph vessels, in your lymph nodes. And so the huge function of your lymphatic system is also immunity. And that will be chapter 21. We will spend a tremendous amount of time in chapter 21 talking about the immune system and how it functions. Okay. <clears throat> so let's walk through some of the organs of our lymphatic system. Um, they, the organs of your lymphatic system, again, they're providing housing for your immune cells. Your lymphocytes are housed in your lymphatic system. So this is why your textbook says they provide a structural basis of the immune system. This is where lymphocytes live. They house the phagocytes and lymphocytes, which are the cells of your immune system. And the structures that we find in the lymphatic system are going to include things like lymph vessels, lymph nodes, but also organs like the spleen, the thymus, the thymus is that butterfly shaped gland in the neck, the tonsils, the lymph nodes, and then there are some other lymph tissues. So the lymphatic system, uh, like I mentioned, it sort of it has two jobs. One is it's gonna pick up extra fluid that gets leaked into your tissues during tissue perfusion. And the other is that it provides you with immunity and houses your white blood cells. So your lymphatic system in terms of picking up that extra fluid, um, it kind of consists of three parts. It has a lot of vessels. The lymphatic vessels are gonna run right next to your blood vessels. The fluid that is in the lymphatic vessels, once it's taken up by a lymphatic vessel, it's called lymph, it's the name of the fluid. And then lymph nodes, we find these all along that pathway. Um, and lymph nodes, like when you think about it, where are your lymph nodes found? Yeah, I see people doing this, this, under the armpits and the groin. Those are all big areas for lymph nodes. The job of a lymph node is it helps to clean the lymph. So it actually will clean that fluid before it gets dumped back into your bloodstream. So your lymphatic vessels are picking up a tremendous amount of fluid. So about three liters a day of fluid will stay in your tissues after tissue perfusion. I want you to think about that. Three liter bottles of fluid is in your tissues. So remember when we talk about tissue perfusion, we're putting way more out into our tissues than we're bringing back into our capillaries. That's a lot of extra fluid. So lymphatic vessels are picking up this extra fluid. 
And when it's fluid that's in the tissue, we call it interstitial fluid. That's just what that term interstitial means. So they're going to pick up that tissue fluid, they're going to pick up leaked plasma proteins and return it back to your bloodstream. And again, once that fluid gets picked up by lymphatic vessels, we call it lymph. Now, in terms of lymph and the flow of lymph, it is very different from blood circulation. Lymph flows in only one direction. It's flowing back towards the heart. Okay? It is a one-way system. It is not sending anything away from the heart. It's all coming back towards the heart. And so the vessels that we find are teeny tiny. The, they're arranged with our capillaries. So they're called lymphatic capillaries. They're kind of intermeshed within our blood capillaries. As those merge and get bigger, they become what are called collecting vessels. Those will merge and get bigger and become lymphatic trunks. And then eventually lymphatic ducts. So these are listed in order from smallest to largest. So this is a great picture from your book. This is showing you blood vessels and you can see that blood vessels are taking blood away from the heart, right? Out to those capillary beds. And then your veins are bringing the blood back towards the heart. Lymphatic vessels only move fluid in one direction. They're picking up all that extra leaked fluid in the tissues and they are bringing it back towards the heart. Okay, that's it, one direction. And they're dumping it back in your bloodstream. Now you can see from this image over here on the left that those little lymphatic capillaries are gonna merge and they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually they turn into what are called lymphatic ducts. Okay, those are the biggest, that's what's dumping right into our bloodstream. You can see in the image over here on the right that the lymphatic capillaries are sort of intertwined with your blood capillaries. Again, they're picking up the tissue fluid, the interstitial fluid that hangs out in your tissues. So I'm gonna walk you through the different kinds of lymphatic vessels. We're gonna start with the lymphatic capillary. These are really similar to blood capillaries, except they are incredibly permeable. So that means they can take up a lot of stuff. They can pull up proteins from your tissues. Any kind of cell debris can get pulled up from the tissue. That includes pathogens, and it includes cancer cells. I want you to think about it. You heard of somebody having cancer, maybe breast cancer, and if it's in the right breast, a lot of times they'll say, um, oh, you know, it's in my right breast, and they're going to biopsy my lymph node under my right arm, right? Now you know why they're doing that. The lymphatic vessels that are pulling that fluid out of that tissue, the breast tissue, they're gonna drain that fluid and it's gonna be moving through those lymph nodes. So they're gonna biopsy and make sure no cancer cells have spread through the lymph nodes and the lymphatic vessels. If they have, if lymphatic vessels have pulled out cancer cells, I want you to think about where your lymphatic vessels are gonna dump the extra fluid that they've just picked up. Back into your bloodstream. Now, where can those cancer cells go? Everywhere. The number one site for cancer to metastasize is the lungs. And the reason is because of how much blood is pumping through that pulmonary circuit. So the number one place for cancer cells to go is the lungs, okay? At that point, if someone has cancer cells identified within the lymphatic system, we say that the cancer has metastasized. It has spread. Okay. Is that when it's called lymphoma? Uh, well, it depends on the type of cancer. Um, lymphoma is one type of cancer, but yeah. Um, so one of the things that we find within the lymphatic capillaries is that they have. So we remember when we talked about the heart, we talked a lot about these valves in the heart, these one-way valves. There are these one-way valves in the lymphatic capillaries, but they're teeny, teeny, tiny. And they're going to open when the pressure that's in that tissue gets really high. And it's going to allow that fluid to come into the lymphatic vessel. So I'm gonna show you a picture of that mini valve. So you are looking in green, this green structure here, 
This is our lymphatic capillary. Okay, and this part right here that they've circled, that's the valve. Okay, so you can see it's a one-way valve. If lymphatic fluid is trying to push out, that valve is gonna close. The only way it's gonna open is when the fluid in the tissue gets high enough and it's going to push and get into that lymphatic vessel. So these are little one-way valves. This is how the fluid is getting into that lymphatic vessel. This is also why it's very permeable. Okay. Now, lymphatic vessels are anchored by collagen fibers. Remember, collagen fibers are stronger than steel. So you can see all these collagen fibers. They're holding the vessel open. Now, again, even not just fluid moving up into that lymphatic vessel, not just tissue fluid, interstitial fluid, but also pathogens. So pathogens can get from your tissues into your lymphatic vessels and travel throughout the body through lymphatic vessels. However, remember your lymphatic vessels, as they move up towards the heart, they have to pass through lymph nodes. And lymph nodes do a really good job of cleaning the lymph. The reason is because inside your lymph nodes, lymph nodes are basically the house for lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell. So lymphocytes literally set up shop in lymph nodes and they just hang out in the lymph node. And they're, they're almost like, they remind me of like, uh, like if I think of it in my mind, I think of a police car sitting on the side of the highway watching people go by, you know, with their speed gun. That's what I think of when I think of lymphatic fluid moving through a lymph node, that you've got these white blood cells, these lymphocytes just kind of hanging out in the background watching what's going by. And if something comes by that shouldn't, they can mount an attack. They can alert the immune system and you can fight it off, okay? So they do a really good job of cleaning your lymphatic fluid. Now we have lymphatic capillaries in pretty much all of our tissues that have a blood supply. Some tissues that do not have lymphatic capillaries are gonna be places like your bones, your teeth, your bone marrow, your brain and spinal cord. Those do not have lymphatic capillaries in them. Now, there is a type of lymphatic capillary that we find in the intestines called lacteals. They get a special name, a star that. I always remember these because they start with lact, and I think of like lactate, lactation, milk. So lacteals are special lymphatic capillaries in the intestines, and their job is to absorb fat. So instead of the fat being absorbed by a regular lymphatic capillary and going straight to your bloodstream, which would change the viscosity of your blood, it's absorbed by special lymphatic capillaries called lacteals. Have you ever taken like oil and water, mixed them together with a little bit of like dish soap and if you shake it up, it turns white in color. You've emulsified all the fat really well. So this is why we call these black teals is because the fluid moving through it's not clear, it's white, it's milky in color because it contains so much fat. Now from lymphatic capillaries, the lymph is gonna move into bigger and bigger lymphatic vessels. So it's gonna go from a lymphatic capillary into a collecting lymphatic vessel, into a lymphatic trunks, and then finally into the biggest vessels called lymphatic ducts before it gets dumped into your bloodstream. Um, so lymph flowing from the capillary moves into collecting vessels. These are a little bit bigger. They're very similar to veins, except we have thinner walls than veins. We have way more internal valves to prevent the backflow. And they have a lot more anastomoses, so they're joining a lot more. So there's a lot more branching and joining. Um, a lot of times they'll travel with the veins, okay? especially when we're looking at like the skin, for example. The collecting vessels in the skin will travel with those superficial veins. Deep vessels will travel with the artery. 
Now, just like we had when we looked at big vessels, big blood vessels, when we're looking at lymphatic vessels that are a little bit larger, they are considered organs. They do have more than one kind of tissue, so they do have to have a blood supply. And that is supplied by the vasovasorum. We've seen that term before. That means vessel of the vessel, right? So it's a blood vessel that supplies the lymphatic vessel. Now we also have, those are gonna merge together. Those collecting vessels merge to form lymphatic trunks. These are basically draining the fluid from large areas of the body, okay? So we name our lymphatic trunks for the region that they're draining. So we have lumbar trunks, show you where those would be found. Um, so um, if we look at this image, you can see down here, a left and a right lumbar trunk. So those are here and down here. You are looking, you can actually see the ribs here. So you are looking in the trunk of the body, okay? So you have a right and a left lumbar trunk, again, draining sort of the trunk of the body. There are right and left bronchomediastinal trunks. Before we even look at a picture, where do you think that's going to be located? Yes, right, mediastinum is right in the middle, bronchi go out to the lungs. So you're probably looking for something up a little higher than we just saw, okay? So the bronchomediastinal trunk, you can see one is here. Okay. And then the other one is over here. Okay. So you can actually see in this light blue color down the middle, that's the trachea. Remember, that's going to branch to form the bronchi. Paired subclavian trunks, where do you think those are located? Next to what vessel? Subclavian artery, right? So the subclavian trunks you can see are here okay, and over here. Right and left. Jugular trunks. Those are going to be next to the jugular veins. Bless you. So here and here. Those are going to be draining basically the head area. And then lastly, are there's one single intestinal trunk. Um, and the intestinal trunk, sorry, I drew all over this, kind of runs right down the bottom. Those trunks are all going to take that fluid from all those different areas, and then they're going to merge it into larger lymphatic ducts. And lymphatic ducts, there's only two large lymphatic ducts. There's a right lymphatic duct. This is going to drain the right upper arm, the right side of the head, and the right side of just the thorax. Okay. The thoracic duct is much bigger because it is draining everything else. The left side of the head, left arm, and then all the left side of the body, including both right and left legs. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger. So if you look at this image, um, you can see here in sort of that orangey color, this is what the thoracic duct is draining. And in green over here on the right side, you can see that is what the right lymphatic duct is draining. Okay, so we'd say that the thoracic duct is definitely a little bit larger. Each of these are gonna dump all of that lymphatic fluid, all that extra tissue fluid back into your bloodstream at the junction of the internal jugular and subclavian veins on its respective side. So let's go back here. It's going to dump, and you can see they tried to show you in this picture. Okay, so we can see over here the thoracic duct that's in orange. All of that fluid is going to get dumped in right here, okay, at the junction of the jugular and subclavian. And then over here in green, this um, right lymphatic duct is dumping in on its side, on the right side between the jugular and subclavian. So one thing that I want to point out, now that we kind of know all the vessels, how that is getting sort of back into your bloodstream, I do want to point out that unlike your blood vessels, which have a muscular pump, right? The heart is pumping blood through the body. You don't have that in lymphatic vessels. There is no muscular pump for lymphatic fluid. 
So what is propelling your lymphatic fluid to get back into your bloodstream all the way up here at the junction of the jugular and subclavian vein? It is a whole lot of things that are propelling that lymphatic fluid. So one is just skeletal muscle. Because remember, these lymphatic vessels, they sit right next to veins or deep arteries. And so the skeletal muscle, as you move around, that muscle helps to milk the lymphatic fluid back up to where it's going to dump into the bloodstream. Pressure changes. As you breathe in and out and you and the pressure is changing in the abdominal pelvic cavity and then the thoracic cavity, it's going to help to milk that lymphatic fluid back to the bloodstream. There are also a lot of valves, just like we talked about venous valves that prevent the backflow of blood. There are a lot of lymphatic valves preventing the backflow of lymphatic fluid. Nearby arteries, so any lymphatic vessel that is situated next to an artery, arteries have a lot of pressure in them and they have that pulsatile nature to them. That's going to help to milk lymphatic fluid back. And then there are also, in some of the larger lymphatic vessels, there's some smooth muscle that helps to squeeze that lymphatic fluid back into the bloodstream. However, the movement of lymphatic fluid is very slow and it's very sporadic. I want you to think about this. If you are not moving much, like let's say when you're sleeping, and you're sleeping at night, and you're not moving, so you don't have skeletal muscles helping to milk that back, and your heart rate has slowed down, so everything is a little bit slower. Lymphatic fluid is moving slower back into your bloodstream. This is why when you wake up in the morning, you might notice like your fingers are a little more swollen, or your toes, or your ankles might be a little more swollen. You might have more tissue fluid in your tissues, when you wake up in the morning, because you've just spent eight hours not moving very much, okay? So that lymphatic fluid is a little more stagnant. Once you're up and you start moving, that fluid starts moving faster and it's getting drained faster. Okay? So the movement of lymphatic fluid is very slow and it's very sporadic based on your movement. 